Welcome to Biofarm International's podcast, Parallel Control and Powerful Software Solutions, Important Tools for Efficient Vaccine Development. This podcast is brought to you by the Bioprocess Center of the Eppendorf AG, your expert partner for fermenter, bioreactors, and consumables for bioprocessing. To find out more, please go to www.eppendorf.com slash bioprocess. And now, here's your host for this podcast, the contributing editor for Biofarm International, Cindy Dubin. Hello, everyone. This is Cindy Dubin, contributing editor for Biofarm International, and I'm here with Dr. Jörg Schwinde, key segment manager for vaccines and monoclonal antibodies at the Bioprocess Center of Eppendorf AG. Thank you for being here today, Jörg. Thank you very much for having me here. So to get started, can you briefly describe the vaccine market? Yeah, yes. Currently, the global vaccine market is at a value of approximately 50 billion US dollars. About 80% are human vaccines and 20% are veterinary vaccines. Of the human vaccines, 90% can be considered as prophylactic ones and around 10% as therapeutic ones. For example, treatments against cancer. Remarkable is that the market is dominated by five multinational companies and as leading company by vaccine doses per year, the Serum Institute of India can be mentioned. And your, what would you say is driving the vaccine market? The drivers um, may be comprised by two main factors. It will be costs, means that the cost per doses should be decreased. And on the other hand, the yield during the production process should be increased. Further to this, the factor of external pressure referring to affordable prices and also funding are important. Affordable pricing per dose is extremely important for developing countries. And what can we observe during this COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, there is not only one um, observation. Um, Again, remarkable is that there are currently more than about 100 COVID-19 related projects in the pipeline as periodically published by the WHO. And about eight of these are in a clinical trial phase one or two. The number of them might increase in the subsequent period. Um, Another observation is that competitors in the vaccine market cooperate together and big players work together with comparably young companies. And beside of traditional platform technologies, additional platforms appear like RNA and DNA platforms. So playing off of what you just mentioned about RNA and DNA platforms, are there specific effects resulting from these relatively new techniques? There are. And uh, maybe that the volumes for production can be reduced tremendously compared with traditional microbial and cell cultivation production processes and still being able to provide sufficient vaccine doses for the global demand. RNR, RNA platforms can be even run in cell-free systems. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us that time plays a major role in getting a vaccine developed. Assuming that human and animal cells or microbial strains are involved, can you describe the development process? Well, let's get back to the COVID-19 related um, um, phase um, and what role can be observed here. Um, The speed to clinic or to market plays always a role in this frame of vaccine development, but the time aside, certainly safety and flexibility are important factors. And getting now to the human and animal cells or microbial um, strains which are involved in vaccine 
um, development? Well, at the beginning, the cell line and strain selection, including the cultivation media selection, are relevant initial factors with the options of precise monitoring and control of the processes, followed by a technology transfer and scale up and subsequent downstream processes. These processes are all accompanied and improved by continuous data analytics in the frame of the PAT initiative. And for example, cell densities and metabolic conditions can be continuously measured and controlled to achieve as many data as possible. By this, the characterization of the process happens already at the early development stages, which supports the regulatory environment. An important role in accelerating the process development have definitely the predictive instruments like design of experiment DOE software tools. Jörg, thank you for that explanation. So what do you see then as positive influencers for the future? Yeah, um, there can be mentioned various ones. The research and development steps will be accelerated by the efficient usage of data and even automation processes. Beside of reusable bioreactors and fermenters, the single-use technologies have almost an equal market share. And modular manufacturing suites allow a flexible increase and decrease of production volumes. The intensification of manufacturing process will lead to smaller volumes and comparable yields like the traditional ones. And last but not least, powerful downstream techniques are continuously developed because all efforts to optimize the upstream area should not get lost downstream. And what do you see as Eppendorf's role within this context? Uh, this is a very good uh, question and it will get an, a bit longer answer because it cannot be summarized in one sentence only. But let me proceed. Eppendorf Bioprocess is the specialist and your expert partner in the upstream bioprocess area. Cell line and strain selection as well as cultivation media selection are conducted with our highly parallel and small scale cultivation platforms with operation volumes from 50 ml to 3.7 liters. We offer systems for the parallel control of up to 24 bioreactors and the powerful SCADA software solutions that monitor and control all important process parameters. Especially in this time where most of the people must work from home, our Visionize onboard devices offer the possibility for remote monitoring and notifications. The small-scale technique is followed by the controlled benchtop reactors with operation volumes from 500 ml to 40 liters per vessel. By volume, this range is getting finalized by pilot and production bioreactors and fermenters with operation volumes of up to 1,200 liters. Most of the vessel types are available as reusable as well as single-use versions. On the bench, Eppendorf provides the largest range of single-use, stirred tank, rigid walled bioreactors and fermenters. In the near future, controlled and stirred cultivation bags for pilot and production purposes will be supplied as well. The software platforms of the process control are open to be combined with third-party analytical instruments like Raman technology, cell counters, or mass spectrometers. Efficiently completed is the product range by the lab products of Eppendorf, like freezers, centrifuges, and automation devices, accompanied by the precise liquid handling technique, so that any user has the opportunity to get covered the demands of a flexible facility from one hand only.
Jorn, thank you for that very informative overview. We truly appreciate you being here today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. This has been Cindy Dubin, Contributing Editor for Biofarm International. Thanks to all for listening. You've been listening to Biofarm International's podcast, Parallel Control and Powerful Software Solutions, Important Tools for Efficient Vaccine Development. This podcast is brought to you by the Bioprocess Center of the Eppendorf AG, your expert partner for fermenter, bioreactors, and consumables for bioprocessing. To find out more, please go to www.eppendorf.com bioprocess.